I got Wildax Lives. I think it's time to play a little Seven Days to Die. All right. Ooh, it has been a bit, a bit for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't have any other antibiotics. So I guess I'll take those. I've got nothing to drink. Coffee. That's it. Need to work on my food stuff. I think is going to be my, my plan for today. Oh, some of this stuff should have made it into other things and didn't. Medicine. Yeah, I, uh, I ended up with a cold that I still am feeling the effects of. Unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, you know, so, um, it was a weird one. Uh, it, it was like, like I said, I'm still feeling it a little bit. A little bit of sore throat, a little bit of froggy throat. Um, but uh, the worst part was like a really dry throat with a dry cough. So every time I tried to talk, I would just start coughing. <laughs> I just, which really sucks when you're trying to sleep. Let me tell you. Um, when you're trying to sleep and you're a snorer like I am, then, uh, you know. Every couple of minutes, I'd wake up coughing. Uh, but yeah, so I think it's uh, mostly, mostly done. Feels like, maybe. Um, I feel like it was a little better yesterday, uh, honestly. Uh, although I did just finish a multi, multi-hour uh, gaming session with uh, my gaming group, so... Maybe I talk too much during that. Um, but uh, I didn't get a chance to record before the gaming session, so I thought I'd throw in a late night recording session here. While I work on my uh, my farm area, I guess. Um, yeah, we uh, we did get our our D and D games back up and going. Um, I think. I th don't think I played since the last, since the we started playing again. Uh, so the first game we did was uh, the game I run. Um, I'd, I'd hope to get right back into it. Uh, one of our players quit playing, so I was going to have one of the other guys make a, a new character. Uh, I think I talked about this a little bit. And he, uh, man, he took forever. He took like uh, an hour and a half of our... I don't know what do we play two. Uh, he took a, he took almost an hour and a half of our two hours of play time, um, which is insane. It, like if he was new to the game, I can understand, but to just whip up a new character, uh, I feel like what he did, uh, given what I've now read about the choices he's made, is um, he wanted to make again. He only goes for the cheatiest builds possible that stay within the rules. Like, it's it's more than a little annoying to me sometimes, uh, the way he plays the game. Uh, and uh, I like to, um, I mean, I don't have a problem with having a class, but I usually like to try to come up with, like, a theme for my character, right? And so then I tailor, tailor the character around the theme. And... Um, he, uh, he likes to uh, take the overpowered class and um, just see how many ways he can jank the rules around to make his character overpowered. Uh, which to me takes some of the fun out of the game. Uh, as a player, as a DM, uh, you know, it's... 
it can be a little annoying when one guy tries to do every part of the the game and not let anybody else do anything uh which is definitely how he plays okay how much wood did i just grab i got 594 obviously i'm gonna need more than that uh gonna build quite a bit here so let me head out away from these buildings into the woods here a little bit and see um, but yes, we didn't really get very far. Um, he finally made the character and then, um, <laughs> it was kind of funny cause they, uh, uh, um, uh, basically I told them that a couple of weeks had passed since the end of the last section and, um, and then the ghost appears. There's a ghost character in the game that tells them what's going on and where they need to go. Oh, a snake. And, um... And so then, uh, in the rest of the time we played, they proceeded to go and question, in fact, repeatedly question some characters, um, trying to get the information on this place. And I'm just like, it's, it's... I told you, it's southwest, the one place you've been to, and kind of southeast of here and east of this other place and so they're like oh well we'll go question the people from that place and i'm like well i mean remember this whole area is covered in snow and ice and it's only starting to melt now and reveal the the ruins i'm like and she, she tells you where to go like they have a map that they can go explore on um and so they just they spent the whole time just questioning these people have nothing to do with this particular thing and I'm just like Ugh. I wish they would just go I wish they would just go but that's not how you're supposed to run a game you're supposed to let your players try to figure it out themselves maybe give them a hint here or there but uh, you know they talk to an NPC and I would I would give them the hint that they need to be moving on <laughs> and then they go talk to the same NPC they already talked to twice about it I'm just like rolling my eyes Oh, that is a zombie. I was trying to figure out what I was seeing over here. It looked like a red plant. It's a zombie. It's a dead zombie. Um, but yeah, so that was, um... It was nice, getting back into D&D. &D. Uh, I am gonna have to... Uh get some stuff ready for next time though i don't know if we'll need it but uh there's some travel um events that can happen depending on the dice rolls and um so um so i need them to uh you know roll the dice and then if the number hits a certain thing then um uh, then an event occurs and then the event can occur in the daytime or the nighttime. So there's, there's nighttime events. There's the daytime events. They can only happen once a day. Um, or once a, once a time of day. And, um, so I like to roll out what the events are going to be and get the maps prepared ahead of time. So that if they do happen, then, you know, we're ready to go. And since we started a new campaign, I don't have them pre-rolled out. Because I have some for the old, the previous book. Because it's, uh, this campaign we're running is in, or that I'm running is in three books. And three books? Yeah, I think it's three books. And, um, and so the first book, I had one set of events, um, and monsters that might attack. And then... Second book has got a new set because they're higher level now, and so things are more dangerous. And um, so, yes, yeah, so I want to get some of that done before our next session in case they trigger one of those. Um, I think they've got about three days of travel before they get to the next dungeon. So, uh, you know, that's like six times stuff could happen. Um, 
And so I'll get all that rolled up ahead of time, and then that way... That way, once they get started, I can, you know, have the events take place. Usually there's stuff like, oh, you come across a group of refugees, or, you know, you find a torn leather bag um, half frozen in the ground, or you've been attacked by 17 polar bears. Okay, it wouldn't be 17 polar bears, but you get the idea. Uh, and so I want to get all that stuff ready for him. Uh, and then last week, uh, so not, not the Sunday we just went through. Cool. Do coal. Um, so not um not the Sunday we just went through, but the Sunday before that. Uh should have been the other guy starting, but then he didn't show up or send a message or anything. Um I don't think we heard from him from Wednesday to Tuesday of the next week. Uh which, you know, is rude. It was it was just rude. He was just being rude. That's all there is to it. Um And uh He decided on other plans he wanted to do, but didn't think it was worth the effort to type a message out in our Discord to let us know he wasn't gonna be available so we could make other plans. I mean our plans probably wouldn't have changed, let's be honest. But they coulda. Um, I mean the uh, me and the other guys ended up just playing the Valheim that we're working on. Get to the end. Get to the end. We're uh, we just scouted out the Queen's Nest tonight, and um. But we're well shy of the number of um, things we need to um, to summon her. Um, although we may have lucked out. I feel like we're going to cheese her a bit. I don't know anything about her. We haven't, uh, you know, never played the game before. But uh, there's a group of NPCs who will fight bad guys. And... Um, her spawning place is real close, real close to a group of these guys, so we might get them involved. <laughs> uh, and then uh, this Sunday night we played our other game, and um, I'll tell you what, i tell you what. This cracks me up every time it happens. Every time it happens. And it happens every time. Uh, so we're playing the pre-made campaign. And in the pre-made campaign, you have maps, right? And so um, the maps tell you where the rooms are, what's in the rooms, where the bad guys are, you know, that kind of stuff. And sometimes one part of the map will overlap another part of the map. And so if it's something simple, like the corner of a room, or uh, one corridor, you know, goes down underneath of another corridor, or there's a river flowing underneath a corridor or something, um, then the map displays the overlap parts with a dotted line. Uh, and it will tell you in the room or corridor descriptions, uh, in the case of the rooms, I, I mean, which ones overlapped and, um, um, but you don't really need that because you can just tell looking at the map, if one corridor is there and the other corridor comes up to it and stops, and then there's dotted lines crossing that corridor to the other side, and then the corridor picks up on the other side, it's pretty easy to tell 
where one corridor hallway, whatever you want to call it, overlaps the other one, right? I mean, I mean, you know, the map is like solid, 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 but this other one goes solid, stops at the solid one, dot, 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 and then picks back up as solid again. You got a pretty good idea. Got a pretty good idea which one is going underneath the other one or over the other one. Doesn't matter because they they don't connect there. And um, and the same thing with rooms. Um, if a room overlaps another room, then one room is in there solid, and the other room has part of it that's uh, dotted lines, which means it's underneath every time. Every time. Not hard to read. Every time this happens in the book, we have to wait for 10 minutes at least for him to try and figure out what those dotted lines means. Uh... Every time. And so it happened to us again. Uh, it happened to us again this week. We hit a corridor that goes underneath this other corridor. And then the the room we're in uh, is underneath of another room. And um, and so it says, it says, I because I, sometimes I check the book after we're done just to see what was supposed to happen. Because... <laughs> You know, he sometimes he's just not the greatest at reading what it says. And um, and so he'll miss whole sections of the dialogue or the description or stuff like that. And um, yeah, we definitely definitely had one of those go through this time. Uh, we're in a room, we follow these guys, and we're real close to... Um, we're real close to fighting this giant dragon. Uh, and I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I I think we should be able to handle her, but you never know. And so she... Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, dang. I forgot. Um, she, uh, she pops up at different places around the dungeon we're in. And so if you go in certain areas, it can trigger her. And so we didn't go in those areas. I let the other guy choose. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to cheat. So, you know, me knowing what I know about the dungeon, I let the other guy choose the routes we go. And, um, and usually I only look at stuff we've already covered. Um, <laughs> there's reasons. And, uh, and so, um, so yeah, so that was uh that was some of the stuff we ran into this week. It would it's just hilarious to me that every time he can't read those dotted lines. Um the thing that made me me laugh uh, a second ago was uh <laughs> spell casts in the game come in two versions. They come in this version. No, no, let me let me rephrase that. Spells that shoot out from you come in two versions basically. There's this version the straight line and there's this version the cone uh and uh he he tried so hard to change what a cone attack means this week like he'd never played the game before, tried to change it. Oh, how, what's the space between these? Three. And, um, so our guys are standing around this room, uh, you know, in combat and there's a dragon. Uh, it's a little dragon, so I'm not too worried about a little dragon. And he wants to breathe fire on our characters. Oh shoot. I did not. Well. Why can't I pick this up? Oh, it must be repaired. Okay. 
Oh, why did I do that? I've got wood on me. I was thinking I had to go back to my uh back to my workbench for this. Uh can I have like a hundred of these? And um and so he's like all right, I'm the dragon's going to uh use his breath weapon on you. And so I'm going to need everybody to roll saving throws because that's how you deal with dragon's breath is you, you check to see how well you manage to uh manage to dodge the dragon's breath. And um and I was like, who needs to roll saving throws? And he's like, everybody. And I'm like, how, how are, what do you mean? And he's like, well, um, I'm going to angle it, which is fine, which is very fine. You can angle it however you want. Um, that's how cones work. You angle it however you need to. But they do have to go in a cone shape. And so, I know, buddy, I don't have anything. I'm sorry. The game changed, and I don't know how to get water. Um, and so, uh, the, <laughs> so the dragon uh, is uh, basically, here, I'm going to put, I'm going to put this block down. Okay. So let's say that's the drag, uh, well, let's say, let's say that's the dragon. All right. Uh, so two of our guys were standing over here. One of the guys was down a hallway over here. And the other guy was down a hallway over here, not next to the dragon. And so he was like, I'm going to angle it so that I hit all you guys. And I'm like, how? He's like, what do you mean? It's a, it's, it's a cone attack. And I'm like, yeah, but that means it has to go in a cone. And he's like, right, right. I'm going to angle it so it gets all of you. I'm like, dude, some of us are on opposite sides. The dragon doesn't shoot out an AoE. I, I mean, technically, technically a cone is an AoE, but it doesn't shoot out in a, a circle. Uh, right? It's a cone attack, right? He's like, yeah, it's a cone attack, and I'm going to angle it. So I'm like, you can't. You can't do that, man. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, this isn't your first go round. Cone attack, right? Goes in front of you, starts to spread out. You know, a cone. He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, but look, two of the guys are on the right side. One of the guys is on the left side. Uh, one of the guys is down the hallway in between those two different directions. So you're too close to two of them to hit those two and my guy down the hallway. And there is no angle that lets you shoot the guy on your, on your left while hitting anybody else <laughs> except your own guys. So what do you mean? Uh, he's like, no, no, I think I can angle it. I'm like, no, dude, it starts at one square. And then it spreads out. It's one square in front of you, not 15 squares in front of you. It's not how cone works. So yeah, there was, there's a lot of that stuff going on this week. Um, I'll admit it, you know, we were a little rusty. Uh, it's been, it's been a long time since we really played, but, uh, man, to try and pretend that your attack is going to hit everybody. Oh, and he also he also did the beloved uh I'm gonna say what your character is doing. Uh I'm going to move your characters. Uh I'm not gonna tell you what's going on until you put your characters in the room with the bad guys. Uh he doesn't believe that uh when you open a door you can see through it for some reason. Um so he's always being like, Alright, open the door, move your guys into the room. Like, no, we want to, like, sometimes he'll be like, yo, open the door, move your guys in the room. And he'd be like, oh, you sprung a trap. There was a trap just inside the door. And we're like, dude, dude. 
can't move our guys. You know what? I think, don't I have a hammer? Uh, I don't, but I think I can make one, right? Well, a hammer right here. Uh, 24 forged iron. I got 11. I got 14. No, that's uh, 13. 24 forged iron, though. Oh, I guess I can make 41. I'd have been done with this by now if I'd have used the hammer. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, there's supposed to be a trap door if we rolled well in the previous room. And, you know, the guy who does the rolling, he got a 24, um, for searching. And, uh, apparently 24 wasn't good enough for him to let us see it. And, um, it had a really low, had a really low, uh, number to unlock it to like 11 or something. So, you know, it wasn't like it was something that's supposed to be super hidden that we're not allowed to go through. But uh, he couldn't figure out where the dotted lines were that would let us in there. And um, and so he just acted like it didn't exist. Which I also thought was pretty funny. I mean, I don't know. Is it funny? Uh, I'm not saying we would have gone in there. But, you know, it's a little irritating to me to to be part of the game and then not something we're allowed to even interact with you know um yeah there's that reminds me of um on the previous one of the previous floors there was a thing that would let you kill all the bad guys but you had to collect these keys from all around the floor i don't, I don't understand the point of this reading through the book after we finish the floor like, I don't understand the point of why this would be a thing. Like, who designs it this way? Oh, you know, all after you've hit every room on this floor. I don't have, how much duct tape did I need for that hammer? Four. Uh, let's see. And I've got some glue. And I've got some cloth. Is that everything I need to make some duct tape? Is? Now I'm gonna need glue for something. I just, just used it up. Oh, it's like two minutes before I can get that thing. That's okay, I'll make my life easier. But, uh, yeah, so we, uh, we, uh, <laughs> oh, man, I'm gonna go get some, uh, some more rotten meat and stuff from the ground here. I haven't really been collecting that, and I'm gonna need these farm blocks. I also need, uh, niter. Which I was gonna look for while I was out there, in, uh, Foresty area, and I forgot. But we uh, we entered this room, right? And like I said, there's a there's a section that's dotted lines, and so he was very confused about that, and so we sat there for like ten minutes, waiting for him to try and figure out the map. And um, and I was wondering, what was taking him so long? And so I open the book, and as soon as I open the book and see, I'm like, oh, dotted lines, yep. And uh, and so I close the book, and I send a message to the guy. I'm like, yep, dotted lines. He just starts, you know, LOL in chat, in our side chat that we got going. Uh, so we can discuss things without the DM knowing what we're discussing, because 
Uh, oh, yeah. So this this is the thing he did too. I uh I get I play a bard that has an ability. I guess I have been collecting them, man. I thought there'd be more bloody chunks out here for me to hack into, but I'm not seeing anything. Oh, something like that. Bloody chunks. Nope, you're a tire. And um, so the type of bard I'm playing is called a uh, College of Swords, and so it has this ability called Flourish. And one of the Flourish abilities is called Defense Flourish or something like that. And so if you roll, uh, if you use a bard inspiration, which you have a limited amount of between rests, then you can add that to your attack when you hit. And you can also add that to your armor class. And so, uh, till the beginning of your next turn. And so I also have Master's Flourish, which is slightly different. It just uses a D6, but my regular inspiration, which I don't normally use, and I always forget I even have, is a D12. A, you know, a 12-sided dice versus a 6-sided dice. So I thought I'd try the D12 on this attack, and so... I attack and miss, so I don't can't you know can't use it. And then I attack and I hit, and so I use it. And when I roll the dice, I rolled an eleven out of twelve, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And uh, and he goes, all right, so he you know adds that to the damage and uh, that I did to the guy. And then uh, I'm like, yeah, it's awesome because obviously that was a defensive flourish. Um, because there's only three. Uh, one I forget what the other one does. One is um. You can do damage to a second character. Can I get guts and stuff from these guys? No. Um, and then the uh, uh, the one I I usually use the defensive flourish, which gives him AC because you know my bard is uh, kind of a frontline kind of guy uh, due to the way our games work out. And, uh, well, I'm very disappointed in the complete lack of street dead stuff for me to chop up. Oh, no. I was so out of stamina. Um, so, uh, you know, I was like, oh, that's awesome. And uh, I want to tell the other players, hey, man, my AC is now going to be 32 until the start of my next turn. And I forgot, forgot how our DM cheats. And so what does he do? He has all the bad guys that are near my guy run away from my guy to attack the other players. Because, obviously, unless he rolls a nat 20, he's not getting through my armor class that round. I'm just like, yup, yup. I'm putting our side chat. I'm sorry, guys. I forgot. I forgot how bad he cheats. Because obviously all the bad guys that you just attacked would uh, run away from you to attack people who hadn't even had a turn yet um, rather than try to hit you because, you know, they totally know that you didn't, that you had a 32 AC. They totally know it, right? Uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, what about this thing? Can I get... Oh, yeah, yeah. I got me some. Not a lot. Not as much as I was hoping to earn while I was out going through here. Man, usually you see that stuff everywhere, and I don't see it anywhere. Oh, wait, here's some right here. Um...
But yeah, so we uh, we entered this hallway at the end anyways with a dotted line. So then um, he's like, uh, all right, so go open the door. And so we told him which door we wanted to open. He's like, all right, you open the door and I'm with you guys inside. I'm like, well, I can see bad guys down there now. And uh, he's like, yep, move your guys in. I'm like, yeah, but what do we see? And he's like, well, move your guys in and I'll tell you. That's not, no, what do we see through the door, man? We don't have to enter a room to see what's in a room. And so we uh, we rolled our initiative and then called it there for tonight, for the night, because it was getting so late. But uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, sometimes. Sometimes it gets a bit frustrating the way he runs these games. But, you know, I like playing the game. And uh, even though I think I, you know, like it if it was being run by somebody else sometimes, I, uh,. I still enjoy the parts I enjoy, so. Oh, and then tonight, <laughs> oh man. So tonight, uh, we were talking about um, some different anime and I brought up an anime and uh, I never remember the names to them, um, uh, and so I'll usually call them by some shorthand version that I've made up for them. Um, because um, uh, a lot of the anime have like really crazy names now, <laughs> and so it'll be something like um, uh, my my uh was it my daughter went off to become an adventure returned as an s ranked uh or my my daughter left the nest and returned as an s ranked adventure oh good i just got myself set on fire nice and um or something like that i don't know that's one we've been watching that's kind of funny and um and so you know we named off an anime and i'm like I'm like, dude, have you seen the... I don't remember what it was. Um, have you seen this anime? And I gave, like, a shortened version of the name. And he's like, do you mean... And then he names off... I don't remember. I don't remember what he said. He names off an anime that is not the anime. And I'm like, no, dude, I just said it. it was this other anime. I just don't remember the full title to it. And, um, and so the, the other guy, he's like, oh, you mean this one? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's the full title to it. I just called it something shorter. And, uh, and so, uh, I'm like, have you seen that one? Cause it's really good. It's got like, um, I don't remember. I don't remember what we were even talking about. <laughs> Drawing a blank. Um, and, uh, I was just like, this part was really good in it. I remember talking about the part I really liked in it. And he's like, is it this other anime? And we're like, dude, seriously. Are you even listening to us when we talk? Because I gave the shortened version of the name. He gave the full name. And you've now given two different, completely unrelated anime that don't have any of the same words in the title as the titles we just gave. Why are you calling out the names of different anime? Well, I didn't know what the name of the anime was. We literally just said the names of the anime. <laughs> um, oh, it was, um, 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 my, my, oh, I, I don't remember the name of it. I call it the, uh, my S ranked power, um, trapped it, stuck at level one, but my S ranked power still makes me OP or something like that. And I just call it the, the S rank OP one. And he was like, is it the shield of the shield of the rising of the shield hero? 
N no, dude. D does any part of Rising the Shield Hero have OP or S ranked in it? No. Okay. So then why would you think it was that? What was the other one he said it might be? Um, I don't remember what the other one he said it was. But yeah, I thought that was pretty funny tonight. Well, also irritating. Because uh, I don't... Why be involved in the conversation? You're not going to listen to what the other people are saying. You know? All right, well, I really need to get to bed, so I'm going to call here. Well, that, and I've apparently run 10 minutes over. Oh, I have one more thing to tell, to say. Dude, I love Godzilla, and the new Godzilla movie's out, and I told the people that I would go with that I wanted to go see it this weekend. And... uh and I asked him, I'm like, hey, is your schedule going to be clear to go see Godzilla this weekend on, you know, Saturday? And they said, well, I don't have my schedule yet, but at worst, I probably work till three. I'm like, awesome. All right. So we'll go see Godzilla then. And you know what he said today? I'm like, hey, did you get your schedule back for the weekend? And he's like, oh, yeah, I got the schedule back. Um... I work on I work on Sunday and I'm gonna be gone on Saturday. I'm like, oh, where are you going on Saturday? Cause we had already talked about going to see Godzilla, and uh, he's like, yeah. So there's this concert. Uh, I decided I'm gonna go to. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going down to this concert. Uh, just uh, you know, found out about it and uh, I'd like to go to do that. Oh, let's see how it is. All right. Uh, so yeah, so now I don't know what my Godzilla plans are now for the weekend, since um, apparently the plans I made with people don't matter. <laughs> uh, Alright, well, with that, be wearing the small things, leave the light. I will talk to you later.